Hey, what's going on guys? In this video, we're gonna take a look at Python strings. Strings are the data type that we've used already. We've written hello world. We've written some sentences. They're also almost always what you're giving as output from your program, whether you are writing a small command line tool the way we're doing now, or whether you're writing like a large website, even using a big web framework. The output, things that humans actually see and interact with, is almost always strings. So we'll start here. There's three basic kinds of strings. A single quoted string, which is delimited by single quotes. Double quoted string, which has got some double quotes. And then a multi-line string, which allows you to do something that neither one of these allow you to do. And that is, you can make your string stretch for more than a single line. A multi-line string can be really convenient for, for example, the greeting screen to your game or menus, uh, some text on a website, the kind of stuff that you don't want to input in like single line strings. Most of the differences between these are pure convenience. For example, if I have a single, it would be true for a double quoted string as well, if I have a single quoted string that needs an apostrophe, well, an apostrophe is what we use for single quotes. So if we need one of those as an apostrophe, let's say, this is going to break our program. The way we know it's gonna break our program is that our syntax highlighting, because we're using a real text editor, is going to show us. You see this some kind of problem here, there's a stray quote here, the from keyword is highlighted because it thinks we're talking Python again, and the string ends here, as you can see. How do I get around that? Well, first I want to show you the utter destruction we've just caused. Python's going to happily work its way down here, assign some variables, and then it ends up as at the truth assignment, which is another string which has some invalid syntax. Here's our problem. Our syntax highlighting helps us find this, and the forward slash character is an escape. So in a Python string, you can escape the next character by putting a forward slash before it. Another one that might make sense to Python is the n. Let me show you what this looks like when we fix it. And I'm actually just going to exit early here. So this is just fine. Everything worked. We can actually uh, print this out. Let's print some truth. What do you say? OK. You'll never need to escape from Unaco HQ. I wonder what that means, but let's not worry too much about it. So that fixed our string. We could try adding some more backslashes to escape some more next characters. If we save that and run it again, what do we have? Well, it seems like this escape creates a new line character in our string, which means that as, as soon as Python encounters this, it's going to actually put the next bit of string on the next line when this is displayed. So your shell will actually interpret this as a new line and stick everything at following it on a new line. Another one that's interesting is slash t. t is a tab character. So if we run it again, you can see that Python, as soon as it encounters this after space, after the space following need, it inserts a tab. So we should have one space here and then a tab character. Yes, we do. Two forward slashes basically means you're escaping a forward slash. So any ideas what this might evaluate to? Correct, a single forward slash. Because the forward slash itself is an escape character, if you escape an escape character, then it's unescaped. So you're just flipping back and forth between two states. It can either be escaped or it can be un not escaped. So a single forward slash that you need in a string, you'll write as two forward slashes. However, if you don't want to screw around like this with strings, like if you've got a lot of quotes in a double quote string, just make it a single quote string and avoid that problem. Here, you can put quotes with no problems at all. Obviously, you can't do that in a double quoted string because Python thinks the string ends right here. This is some bizarre undefined text and then you've got another string here. They're not tied together in any way. Horrifying stuff. So again, you need apostrophes in a short string, use a double quoted string. 
you need some quotes in a longer you know string where someone's saying something fine use a single quoted string if you need both or all kinds of weird spacing use a multi-line string delimited by three double quotes and you'll be just fine let's remove this and talk a little bit about common things that you can do with a string so string methods methods and functions are essentially the same thing we'll talk about them in detail excruciating painful detail later on but for now you can think of them as ways to talk to something they're functions that do something the way we call them on a string whether that's a string literal or that same a variable that resolves to a string. These two things will return the same thing. Double quoted, oops, these things will totally not do the same thing. My mistake, JC Denton, different guy. So JC Denton upper will resolve to JC Denton upper. These are functionally the same thing. As always, the REPL, your Python shell, is the right place to explore this. So type in Python 3, whatever will get you a Python 3 shell. Sometimes it's just Python. And let's start experimenting around with some stuff. We're only going to need double quoted right now. So I'm just going to paste this in from my file. You can see that double quoted is now JC Denton. And we can run some common methods against this. If we say double quoted dot upper, this dot notation is how we send the upper message to whatever's in here. So whatever double quoted points to this variable, the dot notation basically says, hey, you there, and JC Denton gets resolved and says yes. And then we say, yeah, hey, could you uh, run the upper method on yourself? JC Denton will say, no problem, I'm going to take myself and put myself in all upcase because I'm a string and I know what upper means. If it does not know what upper means, if you're talking to an object through this variable, that does not know what SDFKLJSDECIN means. Not that anyone would not know what that means. I'm going to get an error, an attribute error, saying that the string that we're talking to, whatever this double quoted variable resolves to, which is JC Denton, so the string JC Denton, this object has no attribute, whatever this thing is we're trying to call on it. So it's going to say, no idea what you're talking about. Go home, think about it, try again. Let's see some other things that a string can respond to. We're just using this JC Denton string. So here are three methods that strings understand. Uppercase results in all uppercase. Lower results in all lowercase. Did I say uppercase? I really meant upper, but you can obviously see that. And then title resolves to just the first character of each white space separated quote unquote word being capitalized. Make sense? So this is like title case. There are many other common string functions and I highly suggest that you look them up in the documentation which I will link below. But we've got to move on because we've got to cover some other basic stuff about strings. Namely, concatenation. Concatenation is the act of putting one thing after another. We can do this by grabbing a string or a variable that refers to a string and then using the plus symbol. This doesn't just work on numbers, we can also add together strings. Now the clever ones among you might be asking, oh, can we use other arithmetic operators on strings? And I tell you, you should try to find out by using your Python shell, your REPL. So if we go ahead and print well, single quoted hasn't been defined here. Let's go ahead and just paste all of this in here so we have it in our shell environment. Okay, so now we've defined single quoted, double quoted, multi-line. Now we can actually use them. Let's print out single quoted plus start another string. Space has an agenda all his own. This is the string that results from this piece of code here. Let's just work through it. Let's play the fun game of pretend to be the Python interpreter, which you'll be playing a whole lot over your programming career, and see how the Python interpreter approaches this. Well, we're printing something out. First, we've got to know what we're printing out. We encounter this single quoted symbol. Huh. Well, let's see if it resolves to anything. Yes, it's a variable. We look it up. 
Oh, it's the string Morgan Everett. Okay, so we've got the first thing. This is the string Morgan Everett. So you could literally copy and paste that and it would come out to be the same thing. So print Morgan Everett plus has an agenda all its own, all his own, with a space. The space is important because if we leave it out, let's see what that does. I've pasted that in without the space, and you can see Morgan Everett, and here's where the plus is, and it's just concatenated these two strings together without a space, which makes sense. These two strings don't have a space at the end of this one or at the beginning of that one. So if we put one, we have something that makes a little more sense. So do you see how the Python interpreter kind of resolves each bit of this? And when it has a string, then it can pass that to print, and everything is wonderful. Because some of you might have asked, we can see, what is 3 times 5? Well, 15, but Python has no way of knowing that that string is actually referring to the number 3. We'll talk about numbers in the next video. When I say that Python is a relaxed surfer dude or dudette, I really mean it. Most programming languages, when you do something like this, will be like, that's preposterous. Young man, if you try to multiply a string by a number again, I will kick thee to the curb. I'm truly sorry about that. Um, but Python's going to be like, yeah, dude, no problem. Give it here. Uh, three times one, three times two, <laughs> three times three. Get, see what I'm doing here? So Python's super relaxed about weird things that don't actually seem to make sense, like doing arithmetic with strings and that kind of thing. It can be very useful if you need, you know, a couple thousand times some string repeated because you're going to do some, I don't know, experiment or some dark science. Who knows? It can come in handy often. Well, I wouldn't say often, but occasionally. Let's go through the rest of these. This is just some more string building. I wanted to also show you what escapes look like in a double coded string. We're going to slowly build up a huge string, as you can see. So we've got a single coded string, defining a new string, building a super awesome string from other variables. Because these variables just resolve or look up a string object, this is just concatenating two string objects together and then capturing the output, the resulting value, pointing at that new value with biggest string ever, and then we print that out. So why don't we actually run this entire thing and see what comes up. Okay, so the first print statement is the single quoted string, which we just saw. Morgan Everett has an agenda all his own. Then we start working. None of this is printed out, but it's sort of intermediary steps as we build up a larger, more complex string value that's composed of these smaller strings. That value is pointed at by a variable, and that variable is then printed out. That variable has the single quoted string, Morgan Everett, plus the white space string, which consists of a new line character. So here's your new line. Or does he? Then two tab characters, one, two. He does. That, ladies and gentlemen, concludes our very, very basic look at Python strings. You've actually learned more than you probably think. We have learned the three types of strings, single quoted, double quoted, and multi-line strings, and some examples of when you might use them. We've learned about escaping with the forward slash character, and why you would want to escape or need to escape, depending on which kinds of strings you're using. We've talked about string methods, things that you can ask strings if they know about, or functions you can ask them to run on themselves. We've seen and sort of hopefully driven home how variables work again, that they're just simple lookups, to an object that then you can chain other things onto with this dot notation, like, hi object, please run a function on yourself. We've looked a little bit at string concatenation. And finally, you know that there is no magic to this. This works in an intuitive way. There are some rules to sort of memorize. You will make some mistakes, you will make some bugs. Occasionally you can get some strangeness but that strangeness can be useful as well. Some exercises you can do 
to kind of practice this, I really would recommend playing around with this. You cannot just memorize this. Your brain can't make sense of just watching me do it. So you have to type all this stuff out yourself. As an exercise, you can write a greeting that takes a name and returns a sentence with that name inside of it using this very simple concatenation that you've seen. And you can kind of make that as complex as you'd like by using some quotes and escaping some things and maybe seeing if you can make a, a whole paragraph or a whole page of text on a single line with a single or double coded string by just using new line characters, tabs, and other white space characters. And finally, I want you to go and find the Python documentation, the Python 3 documentation on strings and have a quick look around. See if that documentation now makes sense to you knowing the very basics of how strings work. Maybe find some new string methods and mess around in the REPL and ask some strings if they know about those methods and try to use them. See if you can find some useful ones, like one or two that just might be useful for like a game you're planning or just some idea you've got. I'll see you in the next video.